G'day Skull and Bones fans, I am InstaBrettles, or Brettles for short. Welcome to 2023. We hope that you are ready to tackle a new year and kick some goals along the way. Today we're going to be discussing the topic of microtransactions by giving you a brief understanding of their inner workings and then discuss how this may impact the game following its release in fingers crossed March 2023. Before we get into it, we want to preface this topic by acknowledging it is a controversial one. With the current state of gaming economics impacting many other newly released titles of this day and age, we hope that we're able to openly discuss both points of view and ask that as we chaperone you, our dear viewer, through the murky waters of microtransactions that we can keep any online discussion respectful regardless of anybody's opinion. In today's video, we're going to briefly cover what are microtransactions, why are microtransactions a thing, Ubisoft's plans for microtransactions in the Skull and Bones, and how microtransactions will impact the game. Microtransactions in their simplest form are a lucrative piece of content for a game that should only cost the player up to the price of a coffee. These purchases can go towards a variety of different in-game content types, including character or weapon cosmetics, special power-ups, new small to medium game levels or types, game plot progression, season passes, or the good old humble loot box, which can contain a combination of these components. These purchases can be made as an upsell on top of a base game price, or by giving away the game as a freemium. That being, a game given away for free, and majority of the content being locked behind a paywall. In essence, microtransactions have become a driving force in the gaming industry funding model, and has become a term now negatively stapled to gaming as a whole. They fundamentally have changed the way that games are being developed, distributed, and played by players all around the world. To understand how the gaming industry has evolved to adopt this financial model, we first need to take a quick glance back through time. A quick Google through gaming history will tell you that it was in fact Microsoft who introduced the microtransaction as we know it today, but it was not the first type of additional content the industry had pushed. Gaming expansion packs highly embraced by games such as The Sims and in-game currencies major parts of 2000 online games such as Habbo Hotel, have all been a part of the carousel of ways that studios have been able to get paid for their digital creations. The first additional piece of add-on content added into a game was in the form of horse armor in Bethesda's Oblivion on Xbox 360. Its total cost was US 250. Following the success of the sales from this, multiple games began to adopt this model with the idea that these would cost players less than a coffee despite the fact that it can add up greatly over time. Since then, developers and studios have decided to use an arsenal of these content combinations for their games, to not only give the gaming fan more time to spend with their favourite games and characters, but add new features in return for capital that they can use to create sequels, new games, and support the creation of the full vision the creator had in mind from the beginning. With this understanding now equipped, what has Ubisoft decided to do with our long-awaited Skull and Bones? Ubisoft has set up Skull and Bones to be like most other online games of the time. It will feature an in-game store full of cosmetic items for players to purchase that have thus far been deemed not to impact gameplay, but more on that coming up. After watching the game's reveal trailer, we were informed that we will be able to purchase pets to accompany us on our journey across the sea. But this had me wondering, what else could they sell? Just like a certain pirate game of unspecified similarity during close comparison, I imagine the store in Skull and Bones to be somewhat similar with its offerings. Captain's outfits, ship skins, ship figureheads, crew clothing, fireworks, and potentially cosmetics for your very own pirate lair, which we haven't yet heard enough about. On my wishlist, I'm hoping that we get additional regions or maps to explore, potentially as a Skyrim or Pokemon style DLC pack, as well as the inclusion of some Caribbean favorite animals, such as the Aye Aye, Chameleon, Indri, and imagine this, a Madagascan tree boa, however that might work. I'm also crossing my fingers that we get some really cool clan gear that can be customised to show off that we're part of a massive crew sailing the seas together. On top of this, a season pass has been announced but no details have yet been provided. We believe we might get something similar to games like Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six Siege, Watch Dogs and Far Cry. With season passes being a relatively new concept, most of Ubisoft's passes are mostly content drop focused, rather than cosmetic or tier focused like games such as Fortnite. Based on other Ubisoft season passes we've seen, we may end up seeing new ship types, weapons, in-game story or mission sets and also game modes released as part of the bundle. 
Finally, we're also going to get an integration with Ubisoft Connect. If you're not familiar with this, this feature allows you to connect your Ubisoft account to your game and then rewards can be earned for completing set challenges or milestone goals that are set and can go towards unlocking special Ubisoft Connect rewards in the game. If you own other games from the studio, you can also unlock themed items based on characters from those other games. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the devs can come up with. All microtransactions in Skull and Bones will not be pay to win or pay for power, meaning that they have zero impact on your in-game experience besides winning the fashion war amongst your friends and foes. In a 2017 interview with GameSpot, creative director Justin Farron stated that they do not want to gate content off for players just because they haven't paid for it. During the interview, he stated, When you pay for this game, you have a commitment from us to develop new content, new gameplay, modes, new content for players to earn, and then of course new regions to explore, and those things will unfold as the game launches and provide service over time. He also stated, Our PvP is completely horizontal in a way that it gives players a chance to develop their skills and compete against other players. Whilst it's been 5 years since that interview took place, what Farron has said is in line with how other Ubisoft games I play currently operate. As an avid player of Rainbow Six Siege, new operators with special abilities that are locked behind paywalls or the season pass never have a large impact on the game at release. If they do, they are tweaked within one update if a meta is discovered by the player base. Rainbow Six Siege legacy operators also receive plenty of love and attention in the form of updates so that you can never grow tired of using that character from release and it also means that balancing occurs on a regular basis to add new dimensions to the gameplay. Despite the fact that microtransactions are being included in the game, I am still extremely excited for Skull and Bones on release day. Personally, I believe that microtransactions have become a standard necessity for any modern game, as they allow for the opportunity for developers and creators to add additional content that players might like, but are not a necessity to play the game. Whilst we have seen this abused in multiple examples in the past few years, done correctly, microtransactions can have a positive impact on a game, or simply allow you to express a little piece of yourself while you're playing. Now, I'll hand it over to you. What do you think about microtransactions in Skull and Bones, and what are you most excited to see? Will you be purchasing any cosmetics in the game? How far will you go to try and get your pirate hangout onto an episode of MTV Cribs? Let us know in the comments below, but be sure to like and subscribe for future content, game giveaways, and also our upcoming community event dates. The best is yet to come fellow pirates, so pull up your anchors and prepare for sale. Until next time, this has been InstaBrettles. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.